Persons with Alzheimer's or a related dementia are more likely to experience sleep pattern changes such as difficulty falling asleep, waking a lot during the night, and waking too early. People are individuals and so, the, for example, sleep disturbances would be particular to that individual. They might have trouble falling asleep, they might have trouble getting up, they might have trouble waking up a lot of times during the night. And so for each of those problems, the healthcare providers and the caregivers are going to have to figure out a way to deal with that particular problem. But some examples might be things like um, sticking to routines, making sure that the person is warm and comfortable, a warm blanket or a warm bath or those kinds of things would help people be more ready for sleep. A weighted blanket or a heated blanket might also help them feel comfortable and safe. Decreasing fluids uh, in the hours before bedtime so that maybe the person isn't waking up to go to the bathroom a lot of times during the night. And those would be some examples, but it's really important to look at the person in their environment and what their particular issues around sleep disturbances might be. Make sure his bedroom is comfortable, with the temperature not too warm and not too cold. Dad we used to get up a lot in the night, and one of the things that was a problem is he didn't know what time it was. So e even if the clock was right by the bed, so he would get up and think it was time to get up. So he didn't just get up in the night, he would get up and get fully dressed and be ready to go. You know, and it would be three o'clock in the morning. So, you know, we'd have to get up and I'd have to get up and get him back into bed again, help try and explain to him what time it was and that he had to sleep a little bit more. Strategies, you know, sometimes I didn't have his clothes in the room, but then I found he would just rattle the gate and want to know, <laughs> want to know where his clothes were, it was time to get up, you know, that kind of thing. I think you just adjust as you go. It wasn't every night, but on those nights that it did happen, I just would know that I probably didn't get enough sleep and I wasn't going to be at my best the next day, so maybe call for help. You know, maybe get a caregiver to take him a little bit longer the next day um, so that I could get a nap in. Uh, you know, maybe call another family member, you know, but to reach out always. I think that's a big challenge of uh, working or having caregiving for someone who's struggling with sleep is two people lack sleep, the caregiver and the person who has a dementia. So, you know, you're trying to keep the caregiver healthy so that they're able to do the next day's tasks, but also so that the person is um, uh, at their best. Because when any of us are tired, whether we have dementia or not, we're not at our best. And you can get annoyed and frustrated very easily when you're tired. Medicating for sleep is an option, but any discussion I ever had with anybody, they talked a lot about that compromising um, his cognition. You know, uh, there were so many things, you know, anything from antihistamines to, to sleep aids to, you know, behavioral stuff that would impact cognition. So we really had to rely on the professionals to say what's a good strategy for this individual. And uh, I never did go to anything that was a, a sleep aid. We really need to look at the person, um, how the person slept before, like what's normal. You know, where I'm from, we all have lunch before we go to bed. That person needs a lunch. <laughs> some people like to sleep in the dark. Some people like to sleep with a nightlight. Some people like a cold room. Some people like a hot room. So it's really knowing what the person's sleep pattern was before and how that's changed. And what now challenges they have because of their dementia. Do noises frighten them? So we need to be aware of noises at night. Uh, if they hear someone in the hallway and it's a squeak, is it an intruder? You know, you want to be able to keep that anxiety down. Um, pain is another big one. Are they going to bed and their hips hurt, their back hurts? You know, are they able to sleep? Are we giving water pills or di uh, diuretics at supper time and now they have to get up to go pee two o'clock in the morning and now they can't get back to sleep? Also to be careful about what you're giving someone to drink, caffeine levels. So there's so many things with sleep that we can work on besides giving medications. Encourage him to avoid nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, and large meals, especially at night. When a person struggles to sleep, everything is thrown off. Um, so number one, if the person with dementia is struggling with sleep, they're going to have a, a worse day. If the caregiver is struggling with sleep, they're going to have a worse day. So f practicing sleep hygiene, finding ways to figure out what works for the person with dementia, um, does that mean that maybe they need to go to bed a little bit later 
or maybe do they need to get a little bit more exercise? All of those sorts of things before you move to any sort of medication because sleeping medication has a whole bunch of pitfalls. The other big challenge is, is with sleep patterns. And so sometimes the dementia process itself will affect the sleep pattern and you know, the patient's waking up in the middle of the night or wandering. And that really wears down the caregiver because they're not getting their sleep and they're trying to reason with them in, in the wee hours. Keep a regular sleep-wake schedule. Keep lighting dim as bedtime approaches. Get into bright light soon after waking. A big thing was tracking sleep. He slept well last night. He didn't sleep well last night because for, for dad, the cognition was really, really bad if he was overtired. And, and even if he didn't want to nap, he had to lay down or he just, he, and we would say to him, dad, you're just no good to us if you don't get your sleep and we need you, you know, and we could get him to lay down. But that was the big one for dad was always making sure he was getting enough sleep. And he has gone on several medications and things like that, but that was in conjunction with, you know, talking to everybody that was working with him, his team. I think some people with dementia sleep a lot. And so I often say, you know, that's probably good because that gives you time to do stuff and to get your rest. But if a person isn't sleeping a lot, then I think my advice to the caregiver would be to try to sleep when the person is sleeping and then see if they can arrange some respite care some friends to come over, somebody to come over and be with the person with dementia so they can get some time to themselves.